Despite our best efforts, sometimes patients feel extreme pain or swelling during or after root canal treatment, commonly known as flare-ups. The clinician should use proper methods and follow appropriate guidelines to prevent these undesirable episodes. Hi, I am Dr. Roj Sharma and today I am going to discuss about these unfortunate events. So, why these flare-up occurs? They can be due to mechanical, chemical or microbial injury to the pulp or periapical tissues. Let's first look on mechanical injury. It may occur due to firstly over instrumentation. It is the most common cause of mid-treatment flare-ups or incomplete removal of pulp tissues can also result in pain. Periapical extrusion of debris can lead to periapical inflammation and then to flare-ups. Second factor is chemical injury. Injury to the periapical tissues by irrigants, intracanal medicaments, overextended filling materials can lead to flare-ups. Third one is microbial induced injury. It is considered as most significant factor in flare-ups. Bacterial factor combined with above causes interappointment pain. So question arises what factors at microscopic level lead to those changes which causes flare-ups. Understanding these mechanisms is little boring but don't worry, I will guide you through. Let's start from alteration of local adaptation syndrome. In case of chronic pulpal diseases, the inflammatory lesion is adapted to irritants but during root canal therapy, a new irritant in the form of irrigation and filling get introduced in the lesion leading to flare-ups. Next is changes in periapical tissue pressure. When pressure below the root canal increases due to excessive pus, it creates pain by causing pressure on nerves. Root canal of such teeth when kept open, pus comes out but in teeth with less pressure below root bacteria and other irritants get aspirated into the periapical area leading to pain. Next one is microbial mechanism in the induction of flare-ups. First one is apical extrusion of infected debris. Extrusion of microbes destroy the balance between microbial aggression and defense leading to acute periapical inflammation. Second is changes in the endodontic microflora or in environmental conditions. Incomplete preparation of canal disrupts the balance between the various microbial communities within the root canal system that may favor the overgrowth of dangerous microbe which can lead to flare-up. Next is secondary intraradicular infection. It means penetration of the new microbes from the saliva into the root canal system during treatment may lead to secondary infection and can be a cause of flare-up. Next is difficult one, increase of oxidation reduction potential. Alteration of oxidation reduction potential in the root canal during treatment may favor the overgrowth of dangerous bacteria that resist our root canal procedure and lead to flare-ups. Other two factors are totally theoretical and I do don't understand them completely. First one is effect of chemical mediators. Chemical mediators can be in two form of cell mediators or plasma mediators. Cell mediators include histamine, serotonin, prostaglandin, platelet activating factor and lysosomal components which may lead to pain. 
the plasma mediators are present in circulation in inactive form and get activated on coming in contact with irritants for example higman factor when gets activated after in contact with irritants produce multiple effects like production of bradykinin and activation of clotting cascade which may cause vascular leakage other one is changes in cyclic nucleotide camp helps in reducing pain by inhibiting mast cell degranulation whereas cgmp encourages pain by stimulating mast cell degranulation and during flare up there is increased level of cgmp over camp concentrations now let's move forward from this boring topic to the management of flare ups as the cause of flare ups are multiple many treatment options are there for the prevention and relieving of the symptom during the root canal therapy management can be divided into two first is preventive and second is definitive in preventive management first step is proper diagnosis before starting rct proper diagnosis of the condition should be made so as to prevent incorrect treatment that may lead to pain or swelling then determine proper working length inaccurate measurement of the working length may lead to under or over instrumentation and extrusion of debris irrigants medicaments or filling material beyond the apex and after that most important step is complete debridement thorough cleaning and shaping of the root canal system may decreases the incidence of flare up maintenance of apical patency and crown down preparation techniques are two important factors in the management of flare ups we can also do occlusal reduction it is a good pain preventive strategy placement of intra canal medicaments in multi visit root canal treatment calcium hydroxide has been recommended as an intra canal medicament for the prevention or treatment of flare ups next is closed dressing leaving a tooth open for drainage is contraindicated as it can cause contamination from the oral cavity and lead to flare ups last one is medications antibiotics are not indicated in the prevention of flare ups for healthy patient antibiotics should be given only in cases of medically compromised patient at high risk analgesics most commonly used drugs include ibuprofen diclofenac sodium ketorolac etc Now move forward to the other management that is definitive treatment. First step in drainage through the coronal access opening. The first step in relieving the pain is to establish the drainage through the root canal when it has not been obturated or poorly obturated. Penetration of the apical foramen with a small file should be done to establish the drainage. Next method is incision and drainage. Occasionally abscess present in relation to tooth communicates to vestibule. In these cases flare ups can be managed through a combination of canal instrumentation and incision and drainage. Proper instrumentation. Working length should be re-established, apical patency should be obtained and thorough irrigation should be done. Next is trephination. When drainage through the canal is not possible due to restorative issues or in cases of certain conditions like failing treatment or necessary correction of procedural accident a surgical trephination can be used as palliative measures. It involves the surgical perforation of alveolar cortical plate 
over the root end to release the accumulated exudates to release pain. However, it is not the first line of treatment. Intracanal medicaments Use of corticosteroid antibiotic combination as an intracanal medicament has been recommended to reduce pain especially in case of over instrumentation. Analgesics and Antibiotics For the most patients, nasirs are sufficient to control pain. However, if the pain cannot be controlled with nasirs, opioid analgesics can be used to supplement with nasirs. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe our channel for watching our other useful videos.